Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Ratio, Proportion, and Unit Rate Word Problems, Part 1. So here we're going to put it all together. We already know what a ratio is. It's a comparison or relationship between two numbers. We know what a proportion is. We take two ratios and we set them equal to each other. We lock them together because the rates and the ratios are the same. And we learned what unit rates are, which are uh, comparisons when we divide numbers. What happens when we compare a number to miles per one hour, kilometers per one second? When we compare something compared to one unit, that's called a unit rate. Here we're going to read the word problems, and we may actually solve a couple of these a couple of different ways. So you can see that you'll always get the right answer no matter what approach you have. First problem, it says a plane travels 520 miles in four hours. How far can it travel in three hours? So this is a very short problem, doesn't look like very much to it. So how do we solve it? When we uh, notice it doesn't tell you anything about a ratio or a proportion or anything like that. We just have to know from our experience what to do. If the plane travels 520 miles in four hours, that forms a ratio. It locks the miles in that we travel compared to the time that we take in order to travel that distance. So the first ratio would be 520, and this is miles, for every four hours. This is a ratio of two numbers. This is miles and this is hours. All right. Now, assuming we're assuming here that the plane is always traveling the same speed. Right? So if we know how far it's traveling in four hours, what we're asking ourselves is how far is it traveling in three hours? How far is it traveling, the unknown value, in three hours? These rates or these ratios are set equal to each other because we're assuming that the plane never speeds up or slows down. And so if it goes 520 miles in four hours, then according to that same rate of travel, then we should be able to figure out how far it goes in three hours and find the unknown. Notice we have miles and miles and hours and hours. You have to have the variables in the same places. Now we want to solve this equation, which is this, what we call a proportion. We want to solve it for the unknown x. So let's rewrite what we have. 540 divided by 4 equals x over 3. Now to get x by itself, what do we do? We are dividing by 3. So to get x by itself, we're going to do the opposite. Remember, we can do whatever we want to both sides as long as we do the same operation to both sides to solve an equation. Since we're dividing by 3, we're going to then multiply by 3 on both sides. We have not changed the idea that these are equal. But as we have multiplied on the right by a 3, this is really invisible 3 over 1, the 3 on the bottom will cancel with a 3 on the top. And once again, it's not magic. It's because you have a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And so when you divide away, and the, the 1 is essentially invisible because anything times 1 doesn't change anything. So when we divide away, it basically becomes 1, which doesn't change anything on the right, and so we can just remove it. Now on the left-hand side, we have 3 times 540. When you go off to the side and multiply 3 times 540, you will get 1,560. And you should be able to perform that multiplication. Now, don't forget, again, it's invisible 3 over 1, so multiplying the bottoms, 4 times 1 is 4. And then the only thing we have left on the right is x. So what we have to do now is take 1,560 divide by 4. So let's go over here, and we'll do it, I suppose, over here. 1,560, and we'll divide it by, whoops, not by 5, by 4, like this. 4 times 4 is 16, that's too big, so it has to be 4 times 3 is 12. This is a difference of 3, drag down the 6. 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times 9 is 36, exactly 4 times 9 is 36. Remainder 0, drag the last 0 down, and 4 times 0 is 0, and then we have a remainder of 0. So when we divide it, we get 390. Flip the x on the other side is 390. And what are we solving for? We have miles and hours and miles and hours, so this has to be miles. Now, you should always do a what I call a smell test at the end. You want to see if it smells right. Does 390 seem correct? Well, if it takes for four hours to go 520 miles, then for less time in hours, one whole hour less, it should be less than 520, and that's what we got. We got 390 miles. Now, this is, the I think, the probably the best way to solve it, just because we're using our knowledge of proportions. We're locking a rate in in the travel time of the airplane, and we're locking it into some other time, and we're solving, and we're using you know, we're solving for the unknown. But I want to solve it a different way, just to show you that you're going to get to the same place. Notice the problem says, 
Uh, forget about the second part of the problem. The first part says a plane travels 520 miles in four hours. That's enough information right there to calculate a unit rate. Remember, because we know that if a plane travels 520 miles, right? And if we divide that by the number of hours, four hours, if we do the division of the numbers, we will get a miles per hour. And that's a unit rate, miles for every one hour. Now you may need to go over here and actually do the division, but 520 divided by four, four times one is four, subtract, get a one, drag down the two, four times three is 12, subtract, get a zero, drag the next zero uh, down. And then four times zero is zero, and then you have a remainder of zero. So when we divide it up, we get an answer of 130. So what we have is we know this plane is then traveling 130 miles per hour, right? Miles per hour. So that's the unit rate. We we know how far the plane is going in four hours. And by dividing, we now have the unit rate. How many miles is happening every hour? The question says, how far it goes in three? does it go in three hours? Well, after one hour, this plane's gonna go 130 miles. After the next hour, it's gonna go another 130 miles. And after the third hour, it's gonna go another 130 miles. So you could just add them up. But I really rather you use the unit conversion techniques that we have already learned. If we have miles per hour, and we know it's gonna go over a three hour period, just put three hours up here. Why would I put it up here instead of down here? Because if I put it upstairs, then hours will cancel with hours. And that means if I multiply by three, the unit I will have left is miles. And that makes sense with what we just said. The first hour, it goes this far. The second hour, it's double this. That's how far it goes. The third hour, it has to be triple this, and that's why we're multiplying by three. Now, what happens when you multiply by three? You can kind of do it in your mind because there's no carrying. Three times the one is 300, and then the three times the 30 is 90, so it's gonna be 390. If you multiply it out, you'll get 390. The only unit left is miles. Notice this is exactly what we got when we calculated it this way. We're essentially doing the same math. We're saying that this rate of travel of the airplane, 520 miles in four hours, is the same rate as however many miles we're trying to find in three hours. And then we can use the rules of algebra to find x and we calculate it. A totally kind of a different way is to find the unit rate. What is the speed in miles per hour? Once we know that, if we multiply by three hours canceling the time, we will be left with units of distance and we multiply to figure out we get the same thing. So I don't always want to, uh, you know, to, to, to solve problems two ways, but when it's helpful and when it shows you that you get to the same place, no matter what you do, then I'm gonna take that opportunity because it shows you that there are multiple ways to solve problems. That's what I wanna show you. All right, problem two. The cafe purchased five gallons of milk for $17. How much does one gallon of milk cost? This would be a, a, a real practical problem. You have a, you're running a business. You're purchasing five gallons at a time to run your business. It costs you $17. Might be a good idea to know how much you're spending for every one gallon of milk. That is a unit rate, dollars per gallon. That's what you're actually trying to do. So it tells you that you're spending $17 uh, per five gallons. Now, if you actually do the division here, the unit you will get is dollars per gallon. And it asks us, how much does one gallon cost? That's dollars per gallon. So that's exactly what we want to do. So how do we actually carry out the division here? The 17 divided by five, right? 17 divided by five. Don't forget there's an invisible decimal point here, which means my answer, I'll have an invisible decimal point there. Now, five times three is 15. Five times four is 20, that's too big. So that's to be five times three, 15 subtract, and we have a remainder of two. Now, when we're doing decimal division, we wanna keep adding zeros at the end to try to get a remainder of zero. So we're out of digits, we can just add a zero after and drag it down. Now, five times what is 20? Five times four is 20. And then now we have a remainder of zero, so we can stop. So 3.4 is the answer. But since we're dealing with dollars and cents, instead of saying $3.4 dollars per gallon, we'll write it as 3.40 because a trailing zero in money doesn't change anything, dollars per gallon. So the way to read this is $3.40 per gallon, or you can read it as $3.40 per gallon.
per uh, per gallon. That the same same thing. When you say three point four dollars per gallon or three dollars forty cents uh, per gallon, it's the same exact thing. So this is the unit rate. Why would you care about this? Maybe you're buying from somebody. You're spending all this money, and you want to compare maybe another store to buy your milk from, you want to see if you can get a better deal. So by calculating the unit rate, $3.40 per gallon, I can compare different unit rates among stores and figure out the cheapest place to buy my milk. If I'm a business owner, that's going to save me a lot of money. All right, let's move along to problem number three. It says a bakery produces 30 cookies every 10 minutes. How many cookies can the bakery produce in three minutes? So I'm producing 30 cookies every 10 minutes. So 10 minutes go by, 30 cookies. 10 more minutes go by, 30 more cookies, and so on. How many cookies can I produce in three minutes? This is a ratio problem because the 30 cookies here in every 10 minutes, this forms a ratio of cookies made for every, every uh, 10 minutes. Right? And we're saying that the rate of production of cookies doesn't change, so I can set that equal to however many cookies I think I'm going to produce in three minutes. These rates are the same because nothing has changed with the speed of the cookie production. 30 cookies as it relates to 10 minutes is the same as however many cookies I'm trying to find out over three minutes. So let me calculate what W is. So let's rewrite what we have. 30, 10, W, 3. How do we find out what W is? We're dividing by three, so we're going to do the opposite by multiplying, like this. Now on the right-hand side, the three cancels with the three, and all I'm going to have left on the right-hand side is just the unknown W. On the left-hand side, I have to multiply. This is really a three over one. Three times 30 is 90, and 10 times the invisible one is 10. And so W, what's 90 divided by 10? Nine, right? And what am I calculating? This is cookies per minute or cookies made in this many minutes, and this is cookies made in three minutes, so it's nine cookies. That's how many I'm gonna make in three minutes. Now, much as we did with the first problem, we solve this with ratio and, and proportion, but we can also solve it using a unit rate because it says the bakery produces 30 cookies in 10 minutes. Let's find a unit rate. How many cookies do they make per minute? per every one minute, that would be a unit rate. So let's solve it a totally different way. If they're making 30 cookies in every 10 minutes, then if we divide this, what's 30 divided by 10? 30 divided by 10 is what? Three, and the unit is cookies per minute. Cookies per minute. So what we figured out is that since we know they're making 30 in 10 minutes, then they must be making 30 cookies per minute, per every one minute. That's a unit rate. And then we can use this to solve the problem. So three cookies per every one minute. So I'll say cookies per minute. The question says, how many cookies does it produce in three minutes? Where am I going to write my three minutes? On the bottom, nothing will cancel. So I have to write three minutes on the top. If I write it on the top, then minutes will cancel with minutes, and it's telling me to multiply three times three to give me nine, and the only unit left over is cookies. And that exactly matches what I calculated before. So what we're saying is if this is true, then they're making three cookies per minute. So after the first minute is three cookies, the second minute is another three cookies, and the third minute is another three cookies. That makes nine cookies. Three times three is nine. And even if you don't think of the logic behind it, if you just put the minutes up here, it cancels, and the only unit left is cookies. So it's telling you, you must multiply to figure out the number of cookies made. So that's the last time I'll solve it two ways. I just really want to take the opportunity when I can because it can really kind of open your eyes to what we're doing. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Bailey mows 21 lawns uh, each week. How many does she mow uh, per day? Or how many does she mow in a day? Well, it's presented to us as 21 lawns in a week. But we don't want to know uh, per week. We want to know per day. So we kind of have to convert weeks into days, right? And we know that one week is seven days. And the reason we're writing it like this instead of flipping it upside down is because this way weeks cancels with weeks. So what it's telling us is just take the 21 and divide by seven, and the units you'll have left will be lawns per day. And that's what the problem is asking us. 
So what is 21 divided by 7? 21 divided by 7 is 3, and so it's lawns per day. So this is a unit rate. This is how many he's producing per day. So we kind of had to do a little unit conversion there, but ultimately when we do this division, lawns per day, that's the unit rate that we're seeking. All right. Last problem. It says a math teacher can grade six uh, tests in 12 minutes. How many can she grade in 30 minutes? So this is a straight proportion problem. We're assuming the teacher can grade the same amount and consistently grade uh, six tests in 12 minutes over and over and over again. Nothing changes with her speed. So if we write down what the proportion would be, we're basically saying that the number six as it relates to 12, meaning six tests in 12 minutes, this rate of grading is the same ratio as how many can she grade in 30 minutes. Notice I have test and test and minutes and minutes. I'm gonna solve this proportion. So let's write x over 30. So let's write it like this. And how do we get x by itself? We're dividing by 30, so we then must multiply by 30. I'm gonna have to do it to both sides. On the right-hand side, the 30 will cancel. All we have left is x. Here we have 30 times six uh, on the numerator, and three times six is 18, and we can take the zero and add it back to the end. Remember, all we're doing when we multiply by 30 is we're just pre pretending the zero's not here. Three times six is 18, and then take that zero and stick it at the end. And then 12 times the invisible one here, because this is a fraction, over one is 12. So what is 180 divided by 12? Let's go over here and figure out. Divided by 12. This can only go one time. One times 12 is 12. Subtract, we get six, drag the zero, and then 12 times what is 60? 12 times five is 60. Remainder is zero, so it goes 15 times. 15 test. 15 test, that's what she can grade in a 30 minute period. Let's see if it passed the smell test. We know she can grade six uh, tests in 12 minutes. So if we double her time to 24 minutes, she should be able to grade double the amount of tests, 12 tests. But we're actually asking how many can she grade in 30 minutes? So it should be a little bit more than 12 tests because we're doing a little bit more than doubling the time. And we're saying here that we, she grades 15 tests. So that passes the smell test. So in other words, you're not trying to rigorously like check every single answer, but you should glance at the answer and see if it's even plausible, see if it even makes sense. And this one makes sense. So here we have conquered ratio, proportion, and unit rate word problems. They're all kind of related. That's why we're putting all of these word problems together. I really, really would like you to solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We will wrap up the skill with these types of word problems.